Well, after such a great introduction, I can't wait to hear the speaker myself. <laughs> Sometimes all these introductions can backfire. Recently, New York Magazine voted me as one of the 100 smartest people in New York City. So I thought, wow, what an honor. But in all fairness, in all fairness, I have to admit that Madonna also made that same list. <laughs> And I understand that next year, Lady Gaga is going to push me off the list entirely. <laughs> now today, I'm going to talk about the future, the future of the mind. And let me say that talking about the future is dangerous. Let me quote from that great philosopher of the Western world, Yogi Berra. <laughs> Yogi Berra once said, quote, prediction is awfully hard to do, especially if it's about the future. <laughs> well, I'm a physicist. We can predict the future of the universe billions of years into the future. So let me quote from that other great philosopher, Woody Allen. He once said, quote, eternity is an awful long time, especially toward the end. Well, you may say to yourself, what does a physicist know about the mind? What does a physicist know about daily life? Well, we are the ones who invented the transistor. We invented the laser. We helped to assemble the first computer and the internet. We wrote the World Wide Web. And along the way, we invented television. We invented radio radar, microwaves, x-ray machines. And don't forget, we created the space program and the GPS satellite. And we physicists love to make predictions. When we helped to assemble the internet, one physicist predicted that the internet would become a forum of high culture, high art, and high society. Well, today we know that 5% of the internet is pornography. But that's because teenage boys log on to the internet. <laughs> Just wait until the grandmas and grandpas log on to the internet. Then 50% of the internet will be pornography. <laughs> and again, you may say to yourself, well, how does physics differ from chemistry or the other sciences? Well, let me tell you a little story. During World War II, once the Nazis captured a bunch of American scientists, and they called them spies, spies. And so they were about to be executed by firing squad. There was a geologist, a physicist, and a chemist about to be shot by the firing squad by the Nazis. Well, they lined them all up. And then, just as they were about to push the trigger, all of a sudden, the geologist says, earthquake, earthquake. Well, chaos broke out. And then in the chaos, the geologist snuck away. Well, now it was just the physicist and the chemist. They were lined up in the firing squad. And then suddenly the physicist said, lightning, lightning. Well, in the chaos, the physicist sneaks away. Now it's just the chemist. So they line up the rifles, and all of a sudden the chemist says, fire, fire. <laughs> Sometimes it just doesn't pay. <laughs> so anyway, today I'm going to talk about the future of the mind. Ever since I was a child, I've been fascinated by two things. First, I've been fascinated by outer space by the origin of the universe. In fact, that's what I do for a living. That's my day job. However, I've also been fascinated by inner space. What lurks on your shoulders is the most complex object in the known universe. If we were to create a computer that can simulate the brain, the computer would be the size of a city block. That's how big the computer would be. Energy would require a nuclear power plant to fire it up and a river to cool it down. But your brain operates on 20 watts of power. So when someone calls you a dim bulb, 
That's a compliment. <laughs> and you don't need a nuclear power plant to energize your brain. Just a hamburger is fine. So how is it possible? Well, my, my latest book, The Future of the Mind, I'm proud to say, is now number one on the New York Times bestseller list. So I'm not the only one fascinated by the mind, because the book is now the number one hardcover book in the United States. But my previous book was also a bestseller, Physics of the Future. In fact, they tell me this is the first time in world history that the word physics entered the New York Times bestseller list. <laughs> and I did it twice. <laughs> in Physics of the Impossible, I even go 500 years into the future when we have starships, teleportation, maybe even time travel. And I answer the question, what happens if you go into a time machine? Go back in time to meet your teenage mother before you're born and she falls in love with you. <laughs> well, if your teenage mother falls in love with you before you're born, you're in deep doo-doo if that happens. <laughs> so let us talk about the two greatest mysteries in the universe. The origin of the universe and what's sitting on your shoulders. Inner space and outer space. And Last year, the politicians got wind of the excitement. We've learned more in the last five to 10 years about the mind than in all of human history combined. President Barack Obama last year got wind of this and in his State of the Union address announced the Brain Initiative. Just like the Human Genome Project, Change the course of medicine, giving us a disk with all our genes on it. Obama announced the Brain Initiative with the Europeans. One billion dollars, that's billion with a B, not an M, will be devoted to creating a map, a map of the brain. Just think of it. We will have the genome and the connectome all the neural connections of the mind on a disc. The short-term goal is to cure mental illness. Mental illness has been with us since biblical times. Even the Bible mentions mental illness. But if we have the connectome and we have the genome on two discs, then in some sense, if you die, you live forever. You live forever in some sense because your personality your memories, your wants and desires are coded inside a disk. So when I was a kid, I was fascinated by telepathy, reading minds, telekinesis, moving objects with the mind, recording memories, uploading memories, photographing a dream. Believe it or not, we can do all of the above. And you will see that in today's slideshow. But when I was a kid, I used to try to read people's minds. I tried real hard to move objects with the mind. I finally came to the conclusion that maybe there are true telepaths that walk the surface of the earth, but I wasn't one of them. <laughs> and then in science fiction, of course, it's full of telepaths. These are things that we can now do in the laboratory. Things that we can only dream of, we now do in the laboratory. And even recording memories and uploading them. Hollywood is always ahead of us. This is the movie The Matrix. When even reality, reality itself, is a memory uploaded into the mind. So let me ask you a question. Late at night, just before you go to sleep, Late at night, have you ever had that weird sensation that maybe, maybe life is an illusion? Maybe it's just a memory.